See, this isn't as funny as my Wii U collection because there's actually stuff to talk about with these. Damn, Scott, look at all that 3DS. Yeah, I own a lot of 3DSs. You're welcome. It's a handheld I think a lot of people have a lot of variants of. Not for any particular reason other than they kept on making them and uh, a lot of them were fairly cheap and they made some really cool looking ones. I think the Nintendo DS has more of a reason to own multiple different variations. I think each edition of the Nintendo DS had more value in upgrading to that one from your previous one or just buying it straight up. The Nintendo DS, the original <laughs> thing was fucking gross. And then you move on to the Nintendo DS Lite, which is one of the best looking systems of all time, has great feeling buttons, you can still play Game Boy Advance games on that model, and then the Nintendo DSi, you may not get the uh, Game Boy Advance games anymore, but you get a uh, more powerful system technically with exclusive games. Back in the day, you could download DSiWare games, you could, you know, use the internet browser built into the device, play around with sound, the camera, all that stuff. And then the DSi XL is way bigger. The 3DS, it felt like all the different versions that they released were more so for different markets. I mean, every now and then they would do like, oh, this is an actual upgrade from the previous one. But for the most part, it kind of felt like they made 3DSs and then they made another 3DS for a different market and then another 3DS for a different market. So I don't think Nintendo was expecting us to buy each and every version of the 3DS they released, which I took as a challenge. I have uh, pretty much all my uh, 3DS handhelds in this bin here that uh, you know I just, I just have for you know, easy access. And then I have all the boxes in a separate bin for easy access. Because when my house burns down, I, I can just pick up a whole tub and run. But the first 3DS I ever got was this one, the Cosmo Black original 3DS. Uh, the 3DS launched in two colors here in North America, Cosmo Black and I believe it was Aqua Blue. Uh, looking back, uh, I, I wish I wasn't so badass with my color choices. I was kind of like blue. Who wants blue? Black all the way. It looks so sleek and cool and mature. But thinking about it now, like when I see a more colorful system, I'm kind of more drawn to that. I think it's more interesting. You know, why not have some color in the system? Uh, the black one looks fine, but it's just like the 3DS already has such a stupid looking design that you might as well get the one with a with a fun more attractive looking color but either way i got the black one and yeah i saved up quite a bit to get this uh, the 3ds originally launched for 249 dollars which was insane they sold pretty well at the very start because a lot of more diehard nintendo fans bought it and then nothing because nintendo didn't have any games to really put out afterwards other than ocarina of time 3d uh, so a couple months in, Nintendo said, whoa, that was a mistake. So they cut the price to $170. Like a couple months in, a price cut that steep is like unheard of. And that was when I said, that's it. Like I'm buying a 3DS. The problem is they were offering people who bought the 3DS at $250, the ambassador program where they got to download 10 free NES games and 10 free Game Boy Advance games that were exclusive to ambassadors. You know, nobody else got those Game Boy Advance games. And I saved up, I was scrounging up so much cash to try and get a 3DS for $250 before the price cut went into effect. Because when that price cut went into effect, in, into effect like, you couldn't apply for the Ambassador Program. And a 2011 Scott couldn't really get $250 uh, that quick. Uh, he could get $170, though. So, you know, uh, when the price cut went into effect, you know, no problem. But... 250 was a bit out of his reach. However, there were some stores that did the price cut early and those models still like registered as ambassador systems. And uh, I was like, all right, we got to run to Walmart and pick up an ambassador 3DS. Uh, but the problem is I already sold my DSi to pay for a 3DS and I sold that at GameStop and I got GameStop credit for that. So either way, I had to buy uh, my 3DS at GameStop so I, I couldn't get the Ambassador 3DS in time and because GameStop was not budging on, on that price cut any earlier than when Nintendo said this is when the price cut goes into effect. So yeah, I got this system literally the day the price cut happened and uh, I got it for 170 bucks and I got it with uh, an eShop card, a Nintendo 3DS eShop card. One of my first games was 3D Classics Excite Bike, 
and uh, I also got uh, Super Mario Land on the virtual console. This thing was pretty cool back then. It felt like Nintendo really pushed this futuristic feeling sensation with it where uh, so much about it, even, even the design, you know, it's kind of like has this glittery effect. I think Nintendo really wanted it to feel like, wow, this is a DS, but from the future. I was still always bummed out that I didn't have an ambassador system. I, I never got those Game Boy Advance games. Or did I? Ah, <laughs> yeah! I found this one on eBay. This is the exact same color and all of that, but it is an ambassador system. It has a lot of uh, digital games from a previous owner, and they have all the ambassador games. They had the NES games, the Game Boy Advance games. They even had the certificate you uh, got as an ambassador, which was literally just a video file you could play that said, oh, you're an ambassador. So yeah, I have two Cosmo Black 3DS systems, but this one is an ambassador system that I bought on eBay recently. And the other one was my own personal uh, Cosmo Black 3DS. I have a lot of memories on this thing. I remember uh, playing a lot of, you know, Mario 3D Land, Mario Kart 7, uh, Tetris Axis, New Super Mario Brothers 2, Professor Layton and the Miracle Mask, uh, Pilot Wings Resort, uh, Asphalt 3D. I don't know why I'd say that, but hey, I'm not on oath. But there are always better looking colors out there. Uh, you know, I, I do say that I regret not getting the blue, though I remember the purple uh, regular 3DS, uh, I, I think looked a lot better than the blue one did, but there was one that I thought just looked absolutely gorgeous, and I have it. The Flame Red Nintendo 3DS. I'm a sucker for red systems, red is my favorite color, and, uh, I love specifically this type of red, you know, a flame red, just a very bold red. Um, I love this, and you know, it's, it's the exact same system. Uh, most of the 3DSs, at least, I, I think even pretty much all of them, uh, in terms of the original design, always had the top screen being black, which, which was uh, interesting because they didn't do that for all the 3DS iterations. I think Nintendo originally said the reason for that is the 3D effect really popped with the black screen, but they obviously didn't follow that. But I actually got uh, this Flame Red 3DS recently because I needed a new 3DS to send to uh, one of the 3DS capture card uh, guys out there that, that will, you know, mod your 3DS and give it a capture card, uh, you know, bottom. And then, yeah, you plug a uh, micro USB in and you plug it into your computer and you can capture 3DS games. You can, you can capture the footage of your 3DS games directly, including audio as well. It's, it's perfect. This is literally like the best way to capture 3DS games is uh, this specific uh, mod. The problem is uh, they're pretty hard to come by, <laughs> at least right now. Basically, 3DS capture cards were damn near extinct for a while there, but it, it was kind of like a very underground thing when uh, the guy that does these capture cards, and I forget exactly who does these, so I'm very sorry. I think it's I think it's just 3dscapturecard.com or something like that. Um, but it wasn't really like a big announcement. It was more so kind of a quiet like, hey, you know, they're, they're doing 3DS capture cards again. And now I don't think they're doing them anymore. Uh, of course, maybe someday they're, they're gonna do them again, but I, I, I don't know when that's gonna be. But yeah, it, it's kind of hard to get a 3DS with a capture card. But the way this worked is that you would, uh, you know, sign up on the website, pay for, you know, all that, all that junk, and uh, send your 3DS in to an address, and they would, you know, mod it, and then send it back to you. Uh, and that's what I did. And uh, this one has worked beautifully ever since. It, it, it's it's a dream to use. And I'm very happy that uh, I ended up getting it done on uh, a 3DS color that I always wanted. I bought this on eBay brand new, which was... Uh, <laughs> mm. 3DSs are getting like really expensive these days because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are looking back at that era and going like, Damn, I should have bought more 3DSs. Or a lot of people's 3DSs are starting to break these days, so they have to go on eBay and find more. So, you know, either way, this stuff is getting harder to get, and obviously in tandem with that, more expensive. So I have no damn idea why I got this one. It feels really dumb to say, oh, I'm nostalgic for something in 2011, but uh, 2011 was this really fun feeling time in gaming where just a lot of stuff was coming out. Not only 
was there a ton of software releasing in 2011 alone. You know, you have Uncharted 3, Sonic Generations, Skyrim, Portal 2, just all this stuff. But you also have the next generation kind of starting out with the 3DS launching that year and the PS Vita launching early 2012, the Wii U launching in 2012, you know, rumblings about the PS4 and the next Xbox happening. It was a very exciting time and it was also a time that it was fun to bitch a lot. I remember it was a ton of talk about, oh man, you know, DLC, online passes, what's going on here? All the, all this stuff, uh, you know, it, it, it felt more fun to, to complain about that stuff back then, it's weird to say. Uh, now, it just kind of feels like beating a dead horse saying, aren't microtransactions bad? And in 2011, I was 14 years old. So uh, yeah, it, I do feel nostalgic over that time. So I just remember this system coming out, the Ocarina of Time special edition, the Zelda edition 3DS. And this came out around the holiday time of 2011. And uh, it's a bigger box. Like, they have to include a whole ass game in here. This was before Nintendo actually started offering retail games on the Nintendo eShop as downloadable. Uh, so they had to include the full game, uh, game case and game cartridge in this one. And yeah, it's basically a Cosmo Black 3DS, but with Zelda insignia all over it. Nintendo did a very similar design with the Zelda edition Wii U in 2013, which uh, was for Wind Waker HD. But this one has more of a, you know, obviously Ocarina of Time vibe going on. And yeah, honestly, um, I kind of wanted this mainly for the nostalgia associated with that time. Uh, as a Nintendo fan and a fan of the video game industry uh, as a whole, uh, mainly because I don't really, I, I, I've, I've never been the biggest fan of this system. I just think it feels a little like it, it's not enough. It, it's mainly just this is a Cosmo Black 3DS with a little, little design on the front. If it was like a different color entirely, I would definitely be much more behind it. Um, and on the inside, the buttons are colored as gold, but not even the buttons themselves, like the lettering is gold on the back. So it's not even like, it, it just feels very basic. I still think it's a really cool system. I wouldn't have it if it if I didn't think it wasn't. Uh, I'm just kind of talking in the grand scheme of things as in like, oh, is this really one of the best special edition systems of all time? No, but it's one I'm really nostalgic over. And when I look at it, I just think back to that kind of, you know, that fun time as, as a video game fan. Speaking of nostalgia, yeah, I bought a Nintendo 3DS XL in 2013, I believe. This launched in 2012, around August of 2012, right alongside New Super Mario Bros. 2. I bought New Super Mario Bros. 2 around that time, but uh, not the 3DS XL, mainly because it, it was not necessary at all. It's literally just a bigger 3DS. However, uh, I think it was a far bigger upgrade than I originally gave it credit when it was originally announced. It, it was announced like after E3 2012 in a random Nintendo Direct. <laughs> you know, that Nintendo Direct was pretty crazy because they announced that Namco Bandai was developing Smash Brothers. They had all these updates on all these games that they didn't talk about at E3 2012. And E3 2012 was just kind of like this, what are you doing Nintendo moment, you know? Like they didn't really talk about enough new things there. It was kind of just, it, it felt like a press release in the form of a press conference uh, where Nintendo was just kind of talking about things that they had to talk about before the Wii U launched that holiday. But they could have very easily announced the 3DS XL like at that conference and it would have been like a, wow, that's, that's really cool. Around this time, a lot of people wanted a 3DS with a second analog stick. A lot of people wanted the Fable Nintendo 3DS Lite, like how the DS had the DS Lite. And instead, Nintendo announced the XL, which uh, rubbed a, a couple people the wrong way, mainly because uh, the DSi XL was advertised towards the elderly. It wasn't advertised as kind of a professional's system. Uh, more so like how this one was. This one was released at the time of, you know, the boom of tablets and phones getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was more obvious that, hey, you know, people can fit bigger stuff in their pockets. They're willing to put up with a little less portability for a better, more comfortable experience, both in terms of the screens and just the buttons holding this overall. It just feels much better. <laughs> you know, I, I haven't used the Nexcel in a while because I mainly just use that Flame Red 3DS, mainly because so many of the 3DS games that I play, pretty much all the 3DS games I play these days 
I'm, I'm capturing footage uh, for uh, via the computer. So I'm sitting at the computer, I'm using an old 3DS and you know, it's perfectly fine, you know, every, you know 3DS works, but just holding the XL, it, it just feels so much more comfortable. It always felt a little cheaper though. Like, like the original 3DS had so much stuff in the package. Uh, even the, the stylus itself was telescoping, like what? And it just felt more premium. They, they included a charging cradle in, in the package. Uh, the 3DS XL, even the box itself, just felt so much more cheap. Uh, you know, you just open it up and it just feels like very basic cardboard and pretty much the system is just kind of lying in this, this bed of just, you know, cardboard. It just feels so much cheaper compared to the original 3DS packaging, which felt more like like a, a fine-tuned unboxing experience. Cheaper plastic, kind of a cheaper build overall. Everything was more comfortable, but the original 3DS just felt a little more expensive feeling. Well, you're playing a 3DS in 2013, who, who cared, you know? Like, I already knew back then, I was like, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna win any points playing this on the bus. And uh, I never really played this anywhere outside of like my bedroom, you know? Shh, don't tell anybody I was a Nintendo fan. So it didn't really matter that like, oh, aesthetically it felt cheaper. Uh, but overall, aesthetically, it felt better. And yeah, I saved up and uh, got this in uh, like May or so of 2013. And uh, it felt good, man. It felt good to get a 3DS XL. Uh, but looking back at it all, you know, you kind of look back at your decisions as a kid uh, when you would buy like console revisions. And it's just one of those things where you're like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like you could have literally, you already had a 3DS. They're, like th this gave you nothing new other than like, ah, oh, this feels a little better. Like it's just like, you, you could have bought a PS3. You could have bought like a, a PS4 at launch or, or something like that. Nah, you, you decided to buy this, you dumbass. But the 3DS XL had so many special edition variants and it had some of the best. I, I was like, oh my God, I gotta get some of these. Uh, I was really, really, jazzed about a lot of this and uh this is like easily like one of my favorite i talk about like literally nostalgia and of course i feel like just the dumbest little twerp kid for being like oh i'm nostalgic over this this 3ds system that released in 2013 but 2013 similar to 2011 another just like <clears throat> oh just this year where like so much stuff was going on it, it just felt like I'd come home from school, I'd open up my laptop, and there was always something cool going on in gaming where I was like, it, it was exciting. It was an exciting time. Uh, there, there was so much stuff, and, and this was uh, something that uh, I really remember. Uh, also, you know, like there was a ton of Nintendo Direct presentations at the, in that year where it just kind of felt like, oh man, these things are getting serious. These things are exciting. You know, coming home from school, uh, I had a job in 2013. I got my first job in 2013. So I would come home from school and, you know, I'd have maybe an hour before I have to go in for a shift. So, and I remember like, oh man, in October, the October 2013 Nintendo Direct where they showed uh, Mario 3D World's uh, second gameplay trailer and uh, Kirby Triple Deluxe was announced and, and all of that. And, uh, you know, it just gave you something to think about and something like, oh man, what's this going on? And I was listening to a ton of uh, Nintendo and gaming podcasts back then about like oh what's going on you know like oh let's talk about our thoughts on what nintendo should do uh and everything and uh yeah it was just it was just an exciting time and uh this is a system that uh, i kind of look at and kind of get those uh, little fuzzy feelings of being a a 16 year old that just got into two car accidents the zelda link between worlds 3ds xl this is my favorite special edition system of all time. I love A Link Between Worlds. It, it's seriously one of the best 2D Zelda games of all time. Maybe one of the best Zelda games of all time. And the 3DS special edition that it launched with, it's gorgeous. I actually bought a lot of these cases recently. These are new 2DS XL cases, uh, mainly because they, they were kind of the only ones available on Amazon that weren't decked out in like, 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 giant Nintendo characters or something. Not that there's anything wrong with that, more so like I had to buy a bunch of these. So I'm just like, I'd rather just get a bunch with like different colors and all of that. I have a lot of other cases that I, I put these systems into. So you know, I just wanted basic ass ones. Uh, but yeah, uh, I have it labeled so then I know. But yeah, I have to keep it very nice because it's too, it's too pretty. It's so damn gold. It's, it's like one of the most blinding systems of all time, but 
everything about it is just so gorgeous and and it fits with the game as well it, it doesn't it not only fits with the theme of the game which is you know uh high rule and low rule low rule it has you know an upside down dark triforce and you know high rule has you know the regular triforce it's gold um it fits with the theme of the game because the back of the 3ds the bottom of it is black with an upside down triforce so it's kind of like you know the the light and dark world kind of thing but it also just fits from like a design perspective of like that just looks nice you know nobody would be like oh that's an odd you know like wh why is it like that if they didn't know what a link between worlds was about they just think if they knew what zelda was they'd be like oh that's a zelda designer or something like that or even if they didn't know what zelda was you know like this the triforce design is is kind of like used in other like areas of design so it doesn't look weird it's just it's a gold ass system and the inside uh this is what i was talking about with nintendo you know just kind of going away from oh the top system has to have a black border like no this one's gold as fuck. and the buttons are black i love you know the contrasting buttons uh, and it came with a free download for A Link Between Worlds. I love this system. It's absolutely gorgeous. One of the best Nintendo's ever done. One of the best in general. On a funnier note, the Retro NES Edition. Uh, yeah, this one launched in 2014, around the same time as Super Smash Bros. for 3DS, but uh, right before Ultimate NES Remix came out on 3DS, so obviously this was kind of meant to uh, supplement that title. And yeah the box is incredible like you know it's it's basically shaped and designed just like an nes box well not necessarily shaped because you know NES didn't shape like this but uh you know they even have like the av cables on the side that's really cool uh so much about the aesthetic of the box is incredible and the 3ds itself like man put this one in a case as well red uh but uh yeah in person, uh, it definitely looks a lot cooler because, you know, it kind of has this metallic sheen a little bit, but just having the controller on the front is just really dumb to me. It's just really tacky, and it just, it just, it, it's not very creative. It just kind of feels like you just slapped a sticker on the top, and it's not a sticker, but still, uh, especially when, like, the size of the 3DS would work perfectly with you know, making the outside of the 3DS look like an NES system, like it does on the box, you know, put the ridges on the top or something like that. Um, and then the inside, make that more so the NES controller. On the inside, you know, at least they have the red buttons, which is cool, black D-pad with uh, red insignia, and you know, kind of the NES gray. But overall, uh, this just kind of feels like kind of lame take on doing a retro NES themed 3DS. You know, it doesn't really have a lot of thought put into it other than oh yeah the nes controller is kind of an icon let's put it on the 3ds the game boy advance sp had one of the best retro nes themed designs out there where the back of it uh the outside of it uh that is uh had the you know nes ridges and all of that and the inside looked and felt like an nes controller and they might have just not done something like that with the 3ds because they were thinking we've already done that with the game boy advance let's at least try to do something a little different with the 3ds xl so they just didn't do the ridge design again but i, I would have taken that <laughs> over this i think this is just kind of like just feels like something I'd buy at Spencer's Gifts. But the last uh, 3DS XL that I, uh, I have is the uh, Yoshi Edition, which pretty much was released to supplement Yoshi's New Island that released around March of 2014. And uh, this is a really cute system, really cool. Yeah, Yoshi uh, right there with an egg, and then on the back, you know, a couple eggs following. And uh, on the inside, completely white. A lot of people, including myself, really wanted a white 3DS system. Uh, just a basic white system. That was when we were all like, oh yeah, white and black, that, that's the system colors we want. Uh, you know, Wii U was white and black. A lot of the iPhones were white and black. Uh, now I, I'm pretty happy that we've kind of swapped over to like, oh yeah, let's have some funky, fun, just in your face colors. But white does look pretty nice. Uh, you know, you just have to deal with the cute little Yoshi design on the back. Which, this is another thing that I always found just weird about how 3DS Special Editions were formatted. The fact is, like, the Special Edition design only really works when you have it closed and facing, you know, this side facing towards you. 
uh, because when you have it open and, and people are looking at it, like, it, you know, the design doesn't really work. So I, I don't know, it's just a little, a little strange to me. But uh, I really only got this system, not only because, you know, it's, it's a cool special edition system, but uh, I've told this story before, but uh, back in the day, I was just kind of like trying to uh, mess around with my computer in terms of you know, doing different art designs or just Photoshop projects. Even though I never used Photoshop, I mainly used uh, Keynote, uh, which was uh, the, Power, the PowerPoint equivalent on Macs. So uh, I would use that and I would use like the Instant Alpha tool to kind of turn images into PNGs and I would move them around and you know I would I would just kind of format things and I would screenshot um, images in Keynote and then they would appear on the desktop on Mac so I drag the new uh, thing I screenshot it into Keynote and boom I have an image blah 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 pretty much I was trying to find ways to uh, do Photoshop without doing Photoshop and just because I wanted to see if I could because I've seen a lot of other people do it uh, I tried to make mock-up uh, system designs. I made one based on Yoshi's New Island just because I knew that was a 3DS game coming out so I wanted to see if I could do it and I based it off of the Animal Crossing New Leaf Special Edition 3DS so I put it out and it uh, didn't really gain any traction I didn't really care I was just like whatever but then I remember going on like IGN one day and I saw uh, they announced that uh, there was a Yoshi Edition 3DS XL that was leaked by retailers, and that retailer used my image. So yeah, that was kind of a cool little little five minutes of fame I had there. That uh, I I don't remember ever getting like people like like being like, oh wow, you're the Yoshi guy on the street. <laughs> no, but it was cool. I would listen to like the Nintendo podcast on IGN, and I remember they were like, oh yeah, you know, uh, the Yoshi edition 3DS XL got leaked. They just used a fan made image on the on the retailer, but they, you know, like uh, whatever. And I'm like. Ah, that, that, was me so I kind of own that system just as a just as like a cool little like haha look, look what I did obviously uh, that system design is far better than mine mine looked sick but I, I wanted to get that because that that was just kind of like a cool little like like I, I gotta get that you know like I you know like I, I did the mock-up for for that one retailer that one time so I had to, I had to get the Yoshi system but that's it in terms of 3ds XLs probably uh, that's the 3DS that I have the most nostalgia over. That's the one that I'm, I'm just kind of like, mm, you know, like that, that. That's the one that felt really good to play. The one I got the most time out of back in, in the day. Um, the one I got the least time out of back in the day, though. The 2DS. I really only got this system when, you know, I, I was like, oh, I got to get all the 3DS systems. Uh, this was when, you know, I was doing far more videos uh, online. And I was, you know, making the Scott the Waz episodes about different, you know, console variations, special edition consoles, uh, console redesigns, all of that. And, uh, yeah, I was like, well, you know what? I've never even held a 2DS, and uh, I should own one. So, uh, I didn't get this one. Uh, the first one that I got was uh, this one, the yellow Super Mario Maker 2DS. This was a Black Friday get. I wanted to get this mainly because uh, it was just... a. <laughs> Really weird you know 2018 this was a year before uh, Mario Maker 2 came out and uh, you know they, they made a special edition system based on this game that launched first on Wii U in 2015 and then came out on 3ds in 2016 so uh, yeah they, they finally made the Mario Maker 3 2ds in uh, 2018 but uh, I digress it, 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 you know, th this isn't necessarily a good looking system. I gotta be honest, this looks f***ing sickly. Obviously it has the Mario Maker aesthetic, I think the little 8-bit Mario is kind of cool there, but uh, just the giant Super Mario Maker text on the back, <laughs> I don't know. But I thought it was just a really weird, unique system, and uh, it, it was the Black Friday 2DS in 2018, so I thought like, hey, why not? It was there when I was doing my Black Friday shopping. Uh, 2DS's were only like 80 bucks back then, so I thought, why not? Might as well get this one that, that's kind of a unique special edition. Uh, but this was my first experience with the 2DS. Uh, not a huge fan. Never really cared for the, the feeling that, that these had. Uh, Nintendo mainly made this for kids, uh, you know, not only getting rid of the 3D display, which had some issues with, 
you know, like, oh man, you have to be over the age of seven to, to really, you know, look at this. N you know, not that you couldn't see the 3D effect under the age of seven, but, you know, there were reports and, and some studies that showed like, eh, you know, using 3D when you're younger can maybe mess up your vision in some instances. So uh, they made this to just kind of have a cheaper solution for people that just want to get into the 3DS ecosystem at a very uh, affordable price and also give uh, kids a 3DS that won't blind them. So yeah, I, I think this is probably like one of the best deals you could ever get in gaming at the time because like, you know, they, they cut the, that price down to what I paid for it, 80 bucks. So you got, you got literally a way to play all the DS games you could a ask for. Uh, you know, this plays DS games. Uh, pretty much all the 3DS games, there wasn't really any 3DS games that, that didn't work on it other than new 3DS software. $80, like, you can't beat that. And some people consider this to be like one of the most comfortable Nintendo systems. And I can understand why some people would think that because, you know, it's just like, it's just, it's just a slab. This, you know, this gives your hands more area to just breathe than a uh, regular original 3DS because like, you know, you have to hold it down, down there. This, you can, you can put your hands wherever you want. Uh, it just doesn't really work for me personally. But yeah, I like this based on the uniqueness of it, uh, not really on the design. But yeah, I also have a couple extra ones. This one's a red 2DS, but not the red 2DS that uh, launched in 2013 when 2DS was originally released. That one was pretty much black with red highlights and uh, it launched with a blue 2DS, which was black with blue highlights. So they looked damn near the same. Literally the only difference in color was like the, the sides of, of, of these systems. It, it was pretty boring. This one is definitely much cooler looking, just the fact that the entire system is red. Uh, it has a blue stylus. Uh, you know, which is kind of cool. It kind of, you know, contrasts with everything. Of course, this is a refurbished system by Nintendo. So, you know, looking at the official image, that stylus ain't supposed to be blue. So, uh, yeah, uh, mine came with a blue stylus, but it was officially refurbished by Nintendo. So, I don't know what's going on in that factory. And Nintendo offered refurbished systems uh, on their online store. They, they started to really push their online store during the Wii U and 3DS generation. That was where you could get a lot of, uh, you know, special stuff that may not have been sold in stores that much at the moment. I remember the Super Smash Brothers for Wii U Special Edition was there, some Amiibo, some games, other games that were discontinued at the time, and uh, refurbished systems, which were considerably a bit cheaper. Um, and because they're refurbished by Nintendo, they, they were pretty much brand new. Like, if there's anybody that knows how to refurbish Nintendo systems, it's Nintendo. And the refurbished systems would always come in their own unique box. There's nothing that special about it. You know, it's basically just a white box with a 2DS sticker slapped on it, but it's still a unique box. And I saw this on eBay uh, for a pretty decent price. So I thought I'd get this. I, I, I think the refurbished systems are some of, may become one of the more difficult uh, special edition systems to get. Uh, both in terms of Wii U and 3DS releases. But there's one more 2DS I have. It's this one. This is kind of like the sea green one. I believe this was associated with Tomodachi Life. Uh, and this was kind of like, it might have been bundled with Tomodachi Life. I don't, I don't really think it was. It might, it might have launched on the same day as Tomodachi Life. Uh, possibly. I, I forget. But either way, white 2DS, uh, kind of uh, sea green, you know, borders and all that pretty cool, but the only reason why I got this is because uh, this giant tumor. This was my 3DS capture card for a while there. Uh, I had another 3DS capture card, so I've had a total of three over the years. And uh, yeah, I had another one that broke, so I kind of had to scramble on eBay and try to find a 3DS capture card that just did the job, <laughs> just, just worked. And I saw this one. It was made by the same people that made my original 3DS capture card, but the problem is uh, the, the, the company or, or the, uh, the, the whatever, the people that made those uh, style of 3DS capture cards that I originally had, uh, they just weren't as reliable. They were more common to get um, and they were uh, probably a little cheaper, but they just, they weren't as reliable. They, they could, they, they would usually crap out after a little bit and um, that happened with my new 2DS XL, which you know I'll talk about in a bit here. But I had to scramble on eBay and I found this one used for a couple hundred bucks. So I had to get it. I'm sorry. So yeah, I'm pretty well used to uh, this, this 2DS. 
do, do not like playing on this one. Uh, this capture card had some problems where uh, if you wanted to capture audio most of the time, or in fact all the time, you pretty much had to uh, plug in like a headphone jack and record the audio separately. But in addition to that, when I would plug this into my computer to record off of, the bottom touch screen uh, would sometimes be very fuzzy and there wasn't really much I could do about it other than pray that you know I could keep on unplugging plugging back in just just keep on restarting the capture card program all that just keep on praying that um, It wouldn't be fuzzy the next time I, I plugged it in <laughs> sometimes it would be fine uh, most of the time it would be pretty fuzzy uh, So that's why in a lot of Scott the Waz episodes that would show 3ds games that's why the bottom screen is sometimes kind of fuzzy, and sometimes it may not be, because because of this fucking dork. Then on top of that, just using that, playing this, was very uncomfortable. Uh, the USB cable that this connected to came out of here, which is like right between my fingers, in terms of like, yeah, finger on the shoulder button, you know, my thumbs are touching the button, and then coming out here is, is the wire. And I couldn't bump it too much, because if you bump this system too much, if you if you bump the wire, uh, it would pretty much freeze the entire capture. So you'd have to unplug, plug back in, all that stuff. This was a mess, and it was very uncomfortable to use. And it didn't even come with the original stylus. It came with an original DS stylus. That is just because I bought it used, but still. The Flame Red 3DS that I have right now that I got, I got modded, for capture card support, doesn't have any of those issues. Uh, it's great that not only the, the cord comes out from, from you know the back and the top, but also uh, even if you jostle the cord, it doesn't it doesn't freeze. It doesn't do any of that. So that's you know that I my life is so much better now. But that brings us to the new 3DS line. Uh, there were three editions of the new 3DS line. Uh, this got announced in 2014, right before uh, Smash Brothers for 3DS uh, released. So that released, and this was when they announced uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3D, Shulk was coming to Smash Brothers, all of that. And uh, yeah, this was, you know, the big revision that the 3DS always needed. You got that second analog stick, even if it was a nipple. The new 3DS. Uh, this is the regular edition. They announced two at the time, the new 3DS and new 3DS XL. Basically, kind of professional level versions of both the original 3DS and the 3DS XL. But the problem is, we didn't initially get the new 3DS in North America. In fact, it never like officially fully launched here. Basically, North America only got the new 3DS XL. Nintendo only originally announced, oh, the new 3DS XL is coming. And everybody was like, Where, where's the new 3DS? And Nintendo was like, well, we don't got any plans for that one. But then a couple months later in September of 2015, they actually launched the new 3DS here as an Animal Crossing version. Uh, the, you know, it was kind of released to promote Animal Crossing. Happy Home Designer came with a couple Animal Crossing uh, face plates and all of that. And ever since then, that, that's kind of the, the status of the new 3DS, the regular sized one uh, in North America. It was kind of relegated to just being kind of special edition systems and nothing else. But this one released in 2016 and I was like, I, I, I had to get it. It was the Super Mario 3D Land version where it came with 3D Land pre-installed and it came with two face plates. I didn't really care for this one. This one looks like, uh, you know, like a sixth grader's lunchbox. I wanted this one. This was a Mario Maker faceplate featuring uh, all the different sprites of all the different characters, uh, costumes you could uh, put on in uh, Super Mario Maker for Wii U. So it had all these different Nintendo characters in 8-bit uh, on a yellow background. I, I just thought it looked phenomenal. And not only did the faceplate look phenomenal, this system itself is one of my favorite looking systems of all time. Just general systems, not just special edition systems, just general systems, I love it. The inside being white, the buttons being uh, colored uh, right after the Super Famicom controller, and the interchangeable face plates are, are awesome. Uh, I always wanted the Smash Brothers one. There was also one that launched with in, uh, in Europe, uh, Europe got the new 3DS a little early where Club Nintendo members, there were select Club Nintendo members that got invited to just get the new 3DS system early. And uh, and their model came with the, the special 
uh, faceplate that had these Japanese characters on them, uh, which I believe were the Japanese characters for, you know, Nintendo. But I always thought that one looked really cool, really nice. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always okay with uh, with this one. I think this one is, is, is really, really neat. Just all the different Nintendo characters, all in 8-bit. Really, really, really something special. And the new 3DS is one of the best 3DS systems to get. Uh, probably the definitive one would be the new 3DS XL. But this was something where, you know, I went from the 3DS XL down to this. This one has, like, all my personal stuff on it from, you know, like all the games I downloaded from back in the day. I transferred from the 3DS XL to this, and, and this is where all my stuff has been ever since. And you know what? This was something where going down a size, going from the 3DS XL down to this, I was okay with. I felt like the buttons all felt really nice. Everything about it, just like the new design changes were just, I, I, I thought were really smart. Except there were a couple things that were just kind of annoying about it. The fact is, the top faceplate, you can, you know, just kind of take off with your fingernail, you know, boom, pretty easy. The bottom faceplate, you need a whole ass screwdriver for. I never liked that. I understand that's because that's where the micro SD card lays, but that's another problem is the fact that uh, to change out your SD card or, you know, put in a new one, you have to unscrew the back here and, uh, and pry it off with your fingernails. Um, not not super fun, but you're not gonna do that that, that often, so it doesn't really matter. I even find it kind of cool how the game card slot is on the bottom here. I, I don't know, they just made some interesting, kind of cool design changes. Uh, some ones that I, I don't really care for, the stylus being on the bottom. Uh, but overall, I think the design of the system, the feel of it, uh, you know, they, they upgraded the insides of it. It's faster, it's, it's more powerful, so. You know, you get to play literally all 3DS games on this thing, all new 3DS games on this thing. It just feels good. Feels good, looks good. It's a shame that they never really like pushed this in North America that much. I assume it's because they didn't want to deal with with cluttering store shelves with a bunch of uh, different face plates. So they kind of just made this like, eh, this is just going to be a special edition system that we release with every, every now and then with a couple games here and there, whatever. Uh, I get it, but I... I, I, I love this. And there were a couple other new 3DS systems. Uh, there was just kind of a Mario themed one that, that was black. And then, uh, you know, they had the Pokemon one, Animal Crossing, but overall, not a ton out there. They did have a lot of the new 3DS XLs though, because, you know, that officially released here. This was the first one that I got, 2017. Mainly because, look at it, the SNES edition. So I think I kind of uh, waited on the new 3DS XL mainly because the the top of the system was uh, glossy. The original 3DS was, had a glossy finish. Never liked that. Attracted fingerprints like a bitch. The 3DS XL wasn't glossy. It was great. Just felt like you you could like I don't know eat food and play that thing all day long. The new 3DS XL uh, compared to the new 3DS, which didn't have a glossy design, uh, this one did on, on the top on, on the outside only. And, uh, you know, it looked really premium coming out, you know, like uh, the 3DS XL, I said, had a problem with feeling a little cheaper. The new 3DS XL rectified those problems, but in tandem made it less, like, usable. It was just too glossy. I, I didn't like that about it. It felt premium, but at what cost? But they released the Super Nintendo version. It actually comes with Super Mario Kart, uh, downloadable to the system, which, you know, pretty neat. But uh, this does not have a glossy design. I have no idea why. That is a smooth front that doesn't attract fingerprints. And yeah, it's a new 3DS XL, and the inside is Super Nintendo themed just like the outside. It, it's very cool. I, I like it quite a bit. However, since this launched in 2017, uh, I, had, I had enough disposable income to just pick this up. This, this I believe, was an Amazon exclusive. Amazon.com was the only uh, retailer that this one was available on. Um, but I still, I still bought it and, uh, it came in and I was like, this is really cool. Like I was, I was like, ah, yeah, you know, I finally got a new 3DS XL. This is the one that I won. I didn't play it that much. 2017 was, you know, the year of the Nintendo Switch. And yeah, like I just didn't really have much of an urge to play my 3DS much until 2018 when WarioWare Gold released. Uh, that's when I, I cracked out this system. I played that entire game on, on the uh, SNES model. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I never played this one that much because, you know, by the time this released, I don't know, 3DS was just kind of like, eh, 
But looking back, uh, I bought a couple systems that I always kind of wanted uh, more recently. Uh, the first one is uh, this 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 gross ass little little beast, the new Galaxy style new 3DS XL. Uh, this reminds me of something like a stoner would wear. This was announced in uh, August of 2016, around the time that a lot of us Nintendo fans were getting really antsy about Nintendo not announcing the NX, which would then be the Nintendo Switch, and we were like. What are they doing? Like they, they didn't they didn't have a lot of games coming out that year anyways outside of Pokemon Sun and Moon. A lot of the games they did have coming out were just like Bleh. So it was like what what are they doing? What come on, like announce something. Announce a game, announce announce something for Wii U, announce something for 3DS, but mainly announce the NX, talk about your next system, and uh, they just announced this and then they just they just ran away. Strangely enough, this wasn't really a special edition system. This, this was kind of just a third main color for the new 3DS XL at that point. You had red, black, and then, uh, and then the Galaxy one, like it, it was just, it, it became like one of the de facto new 3DS XL colors, which I, I found very strange. But uh, finally getting it in person, it looks kind of cool. You know, like on the inside, definitely is very nice looking, uh, cool purple design. The outside, you know, it's something where you look at, you know, the, the product images and you go, well, that's just a JPEG. And like, yeah, but you know, it, it does look kind of neat in person, but there was, a 3DS, a new 3DS XL that I always wanted and I finally bit the bullet on. Uh, there's definitely a couple others that I think I would like in the future, but th this was kind of like one of the last major ones that I was like, I, I need it. I need that one. Uh, they did some Smash Brothers 3DS consoles. They launched uh, Smash Brothers for 3DS alongside two special edition 3DS XLs with the uh, with the Smash Brothers design. They pretty much had the box art, the, the art on the box art, but kind of, uh, you know, desaturated grayscale and uh, kind of with an outline. And then they had the Smash Brothers logo in the corner. I always thought it was kind of like, it, it was kind of like that Zelda edition of the original 3DS, you know? Where they took a regular color and they just put a new design on it. They, they, this was just literally the blue and red 3DS XL colors that, that already we already had, but just with Smash Brothers characters on top of it. I was like, eh. And then on top of that, just the fact that they had like the Smash Brothers logo there, I just thought was kind of like, you know, I, I just felt like the Smash Ball made more sense. And having text on there just felt even weirder considering when you were holding that 3DS, it would be all upside down. So it's, you know, I don't know. Thankfully, Japan got the exact 3DS that I wanted. It's literally the exact same style of design as that 3DS XL we got in North America. However, it's a new 3DS XL. So has the C-Stick, better power, uh, all that. And they have the Smash Ball instead of the Smash Brothers logo, which is good for uh, importing because like, that way you can import this and it's not gonna have, you know, the Japanese Smash Brothers logo. It's gonna have just the Smash Ball. So uh, it's not even gonna look like that out of place in your collection. And yeah, this is another one that I have <laughs> a case for because uh, it's too pretty. And this is also actually my only uh, imported 3DS. I don't have any other ones, uh, but yeah, look. It's so, it's so cool. It's so much better than the one we got over here, which is pretty much the exact same design, but I think on the new 3DS just having, you know, and again, you know, I barely use this thing because I, well, I don't have any Japanese 3DS games, but still, um, you know, like I, I, it hasn't had a chance to get absolutely just trashed yet, but that glossy finish just looks really cool, you know, coming out of the case. Uh, you know, you have all the characters in the Smash Brothers logo on the inside. It's gray. It's not even like kind of a dark black or something. It's just, it looks so good. I, I love this one. This was like one of the main ones that I was like, I, I gotta have that one. But that brings us to the last 3DS that I own. And uh, it's the last 3DS that really released. It's the new 2DS XL. Uh, this is the purple one, kind of a GameCube purple design. It comes pre-installed with Mario Kart 7, which is nice. Um, but uh, yeah, got the GameCube purple design. Uh, that's because uh, this was my first capture card and I decided to get the new 2DS XL because uh, that could play all the games. You know, you could play new 3DS games, uh, 3DS, DS, all that stuff. And it was also the only other 3DS that I didn't own. So uh, I had the option of getting a new 2DS XL with a capture card installed and I thought, yeah, of course, yeah, I'll get that one because 
you know, I might prefer the new 3DS XL or even the original 3DS XL in terms of feel, but I don't own this one. I made a mistake. I never really liked the new 2DS XL. Uh, this is my least favorite feeling 3DS out of all of them. I feel like it just feels the worst and it looks the stupidest. I think this launched around the time that everybody was really like just giddy about Nintendo. They were like, oh my god, yeah, Nintendo, Nintendo's back! So even a lot of stuff that came out on 3DS, they were like, oh, that looks really cool. And uh, when in reality, it was like, no. The new 2DS XL, I think a lot of people were like, oh, damn, that looks really cool because the top looks like a smartphone. That was like the one thing I heard. They were like, wow, this is like the best looking 3DS. I'm like, are, are you looking at this thing? It looks dumb. They have like all these ridges on the top and like the Nintendo logo in the corner there. And then like the, the camera, the inside camera peeks out like when you have it closed like this all the buttons just feel incredibly cheap the inside just looks kind of it just looks unfinished to me like the buttons are just kind of like cheaper and they just they have like this feeling that just makes it look much more kind of like a fisher price toy i don't know um you know i don't hate it but i just was kind of like dumbfounded at the idea that like people were like this is the definitive 3ds like i'm like what but yeah this one is uh modded to have a capture card unit and uh yeah it broke on me a couple months in uh so uh yeah this still works as a 2ds xl you can just still play it as a 2ds xl but uh yeah it does not will not capture your footage for you but i i'm at least uh, happy i got the purple color thought that looks really cool uh they had some interesting design decisions like uh you know having a flap for the for the game card and and uh as the the uh, micro sd card goes in there which is a, a nice change because on the new 3ds xl included on top of the new 3ds you had to you know unscrew the back to put it in but yeah this uh this always felt very cheap to me and uh very very interesting to me that a lot of people consider it to be the definitive 3ds but either way those are all my 3ds systems i love that little handheld have a lot of nostalgia for it not my favorite of all time but uh, it's something that I definitely uh, have, a, have a big, big old corner of my heart reserved for. In terms of what I want next, um, Nipple Pikachu. 